You good? What are you guys talking about? Uh, we're just bullshitting. Yeah, I, I literally told on, you. On the podcast? Bullshitting. What am I going to call it? I, I called it out. Kyle's bullshit session. I don't know. I don't bullshitting with Kyle. Bullshitting with Pappy. You accept that premise? Talking to me or him? You. I don't give a fuck. Whoa! Oh, he's getting he's, he's bringing out the words. Yeah, yeah, he's getting the fangs out for Daniel. Yeah. <laughs> Are you recording? <laughs> yeah. So, Kyle. Yeah. Episode forty. Episode forty, Daniel. Daniel Chandler. Yeah. Arguably, the most white tail hunting non white tail hunter I've ever met. I'm just saying. Just saying. Not I just, mean, according mean, to him. You ain't saying. You're just saying. According to him. He's not a white tail hunter. He hunts everything. Uh, but did you feel personally attacked? Slightly, yeah. I mean, I felt like I felt like he may have took some jabs that were a little bit uh, definitely uncalled for. Yeah, definitely. I feel like I felt like it. But I mean, I can't wait to have him in here with you. It was pretty damn hilarious. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. My wife well, actually watched it before I did. She was telling me about it. She was rolling the whole time. She was trying to explain it. The funniest part is uh, in the in the text group is Daniel not. The most major white tail is smarter proponent. Yes. Am I making this up for, for shits no, and grins? No. No, I mean, it's 100%. Which, I mean, he even said during that podcast, he just, just fucking talk shit. But I feel like he does think, like, if you notice, he wouldn't, he wouldn't ever just, uh, just accept defeat for the white tails. Yeah. Like, it was on the tip of his tongue. He wanted to say the cow's smarter, but he just couldn't do it. Yeah. But. I just wanted to know how you felt about that one. Because, I mean, he definitely, he, he was, more than he was, once. It, yeah, he was, he was some pretty spewing some pretty vile stuff at me. I mean, I was felt personally attacked. I'd sue him. <laughs> <laughs> I think he could just be That's jealous. defamation a little bit. of character. He could be a little bit jealous. Because your feet are touching the ground? My feet are touching the ground. I don't oh. have to buy my pants and my gloves and my and my shoes at Baby Gap. Or- Baby Gap. Oh, the gloves are coming off. You're going to bring his height into this. He- Does he polish his head? <laughs> I don't know. He never takes the hat off. Okay. So I, I feel like he probably sleeps in it because he doesn't want nobody to see the baldness. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways. It was pretty funny. Moving on. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, I can't. I got a. I got a pretty good chuckle out of it. I, what I really want to happen, and it may have to wait till we expand the studio. Uh, we need to have me, him, Miles, I mean, and yes. you all four in here. We need basically just have the group text in person. Yes, we need to have all four and just debate this shit out. Because yeah. you know, Miles, Miles just jumps whatever trains easiest. He's never really yeah. held one. No, time. Miles. <laughs> Miles just Miles seeks out the easy target yes. and just and just just hammers on it. I mean, sometimes I do the same, but in this yeah. particular subject, coat versus the white tail. I'm I'm is it would you say staunchly staunchly is that a thing? Did I just make that up? Uh, let's just go with you made it up. <laughs> I'm a major proponent. Any age class, any gender. The cow is smarter than the white tail. And you I uh, feel like you're the same way. We've had this conversation yes. multiple times on here. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm we're on the same page. Now, you know, again, we're we're gonna be pushing out the studio, coming up with some new spaces. Once we're ready for a, a four person round table event, we'll probably we should get Daniel and Miles a slightly liquored up though. You know what the problem is though, Kyle? Is we have to wait on Daniel. I don't know. We probably got to wait on Miles too. No, we have to wait on Daniel to be able to even do this. It's all it's all in his realm. Oh yeah, yeah. So who adding knows what that's going to be adding on. Anyways, mm-hmm. I mean that's enough of that. I just you know, where's it? What's his feet like sitting here just kicking as he was? I'm like, telling you, me. this is no bullshit. Like, the one part of the podcast where I was like, get back over here. <laughs> he just. Because his feet aren't touching. He had to lean forward. He, he just rolled off. And drag back forward. He just rolled off back to this corner. <laughs> I'm just like, get back over here. And I, I can only imagine on his table is like, <laughs> like happy feet scenario. Do we need to pause while you're doing that? You're supposed to not acknowledge the fact that I'm doing because we're fine. What are you oh, doing okay. over there? Just don't worry about it. Talk. Do your podcast. <laughs> going on over here. We're just trying to figure out if you're doing okay. 
I'm producing. You doing all right? Everything good? <laughs> I don't know. Are we all right? Is, have I done something to make you think that I might not be good? Uh, you just it's a lot of. I don't know. Have things, you seen yourself? A lot of things like happening over there. Sometimes you do some random things, and are you okay, John? Is this? Are you just checking in on me? Yeah. I guess I'm, I'm, I'm all right. All right, good, great. Let's get going. Good talk. Some of this, <laughs> I need you to pay attention a little bit, okay? Because you are going to need be needed to interject. Because okay. one of the main topics for this little sit down bullshit session is, and I know we've talked about this before, but we're going to talk about it again because I feel like talking about it. All right, whatever. It, that is, uh, Kyle. Yeah, you're, you're with, older. Yeah, not much. You're you're way older than me. You're yeah. pretty, you're pretty I'm like, old. I'm like three years older than you. You're you're from a different time than such as myself. Do you feel that it is necessary to hide things such as predator hunting contests and so on from from the community? No. And reason being is so for fifty years the hunting community in general was silent. And what's crazy is he was around to see all of those fifty years. <laughs> Sorry, I, it, so, it was just right there. You did set your fist digresses. <laughs> But I digress. So for, for the last 50 years, the hunting and shooting community in general, I mean, all together, anything yeah. that involved firearms, it was kept silent. There was no social media. There was, I mean, there was nothing to be seen about it. And basically, our legislators took free will to do whatever the heck they wanted to with, with <laughs> the gun laws and... And the manufacturing and, and man, all the regulations. Whole, the whole nine yards. I mean, Brady Bill, a prime example... And uh, so, I mean, pretty much the more silent you are, then you've only got one one side, which is the antis, whether it's anti-guns, anti-hunters. Right. They're just steady pounding away. Yeah. You're not going to get anybody from the media to go talk to someone that's on the right side of it. Right. And uh, so, I mean, it, if you just hide it, they're going to take more of it away. Yes. That's always been my belief. But, I mean, it seems like some of the old timers are uh, – really against predator hunting contest. Now, before we even start this really deep diving the contest scene, I'm not a contest hunter. I really don't care for them. I mean, it, it kind of, it allures, it lures me a little bit because I, I'm, I'm kind of competitive as it pertains to certain things. But at the same time, uh, our business is typically super busy around contests. So it's kind of like I really can't, but I'm not a huge contest uh, hunter. By no means, but I do support the ones who do. I, I don't, I feel like it's a uh, misrepresented, especially when people are like killing contests and you get these old goddamn boomers getting on these podcasts nowadays talking about how it's bad optics. And then you get idiots agreeing with them, uh, that it's bad optics. And it's, I don't feel that way. I mean, if in they're they're, uh, they're being quiet about things and don't show the pictures and everything else. They really like get into this whole, like keep it a secret and this and that, and don't talk to the antis or don't talk to the people that are on the fence. And the, the little podcast clip we watched last night, they're like, well, the people on the fence, if they see these killing contests, it's going to sway in one direction. Well, it, I okay. think it'll swing just as many exactly. into it because you've got just like you're talking about. I'm competitive. I don't care if we're pitching washers, or what we're doing. I mean, I want to win. And there's a lot of people that just seek out a competition. I know yes. a lot of them that it don't matter if it's a bow fishing tournament, if it's a predator hunting tournament, if it's a bass fishing tournament, if it's shooting craps in Vegas, they're going to go find a way to compete in something. Yeah. Uh, that That's just, that's how, that's human nature. Yeah. Especially when it comes to, to men. I'm not knocking women. I know there's some very competitive women out there as well. But Sexist. on on as a whole, a lot of males are just competitive as crap. You know, that's yeah. the reason why we played football, we played baseball, we played basketball, we ran track, every dang thing that we could do growing up. And I mean, good lord, why there wouldn't be profession, professional sports right. if people weren't competitive. And it's not the athletes, it's the fans that get 
more into it than the athletes do in a lot of cases. They're just freaking wrapped up, and, and that's their form of competition is that's my team. You know, everybody associates herself with a team, whether it's college, high school, professional, you name it. Right. People, they tie themselves in with a team. I'm, I'm as bad at it as it, about it as right. anybody. When it comes to Red Raider football, I mean, I'm freaking diehard, okay? <laughs> So goddamn football fans. I I can it, I can't help it. If if Tech's playing football like my that's my weekend gets scheduled around that whether I'm going to the game or watching the game or trying to find a way to watch the game because not all the time do they put Tech on TV. I mean, you got to figure out something. Why. But it's what's well, because they've had some really shitty years. Is it because years. they're not the frogs? Oh god. What is it, Fancy? Is it this? Something like that. Go, go frogs. Go frogs. <laughs> That was for boy, our boy, Jay. Talk about yeah. Leia Turd in the National Championship game. Whoa, Ooh, whoa, man. whoa. How good did uh, your boys do this year? How they, did they go to the, the National cha- What is it? No, they they went I, to a bowl game. I, but they went to, the, really they went to a clinic to look at the gonorrhea from all the Raider rash. Whoa. Easy there, Whoa. Killer. Wow. Coming That's a known hard. thing. Some hatred spewing against against tech over there. We got a we got a issue. I really with... don't know what we're talking about. Um there is a is a known term for for Lubbock and Texas Tech. It's literally called Raider Rash because they have so many uh, venereal diseases roaming amongst amongst that campus. So Kyle. Hey Red Raiders like to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. We only support good Christian universities exactly. like uh, TCU. TCU. Go frogs. Go frogs. Am I doing this right? It's like a, I think you're supposed to pull the fingers down further or something. It's just, Why is there always hand things? I don't know. I mean, text just gun, guns up. I mean, you don't get any easier than this, okay? Get your guns up. It's because the, the the average IQ of the person who goes to Texas Tech wouldn't be able to do anything but that. Is this right here? Yeah. 11. It's three. crazy. If you, if, you, call it? if you shift it 45 degrees, it's what you guys did this year. It's L. You guys lost. <laughs> they beat Texas. They beat OU. They ended up fourth in the conference. You're one, focusing on the game wrong against things. an SEC well, if you, if you, uh, if you put them in this category, they did fourth, <laughs> so that must mean they're good. You're focusing well, it's, on it's the wrong It's better than points. they did like over the last decade. So, yeah, that's, it's, it's a win. That's, that's probably not as of effective as you were hoping for. Yeah. What? <laughs> if you, see, you see the awkward silence in here? <laughs> I, it, I, I'm not going to lie. They, they, they did better than they did in the last decade. It's and no they lie. still lost. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine not win. I don't. I don't even like sports, but imagine your team not winning. Imagine supporting a team and they lose. I just wouldn't support them anymore. I think there done. was only one team in the whole I'd country that didn't everything. lose a game this year. The frogs, the TCU Horn Frogs. Oh no, they lost two. Once in the conference championship and once in the national championship. Fake news. They didn't even win their conference. <laughs> I don't even know what we're talking about. <laughs> like a parent teacher? What are we? Yeah. I don't know. You're, you're, How do we conference. get off on this anyway? Okay. So you back started to bringing up is, Texas Tech and how you're a diehard. No, I, this is a, is. That's Kyle. This is a predator com- hunting podcast. Nothing about sports. It's not one of those. It is a sport. Predator hunting is a sport. Is it in the Olympics? I'm talking about the competitiveness that people get be. into, and that's how. And I'm just using it as a metaphor. Fits. You're just taking it way too far into it. Like I wasn't intending to go into this kind of a conversation. <laughs> oh, are you upset that you got uh, destroyed? Just oh now? God, He's destroyed. Going- He's See, a, Texas Tech fan owned by Predator Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, that's... Hey, I was just told to talk to the, shit. Back, no, I'm sorry. I'm going to go back to doing what back I was doing before. to the subject at hand, that's where... You know, I mean, everyone's competitive when it comes right. to, that, to anything. When they can get into something, the few that are going to fall off the fence because, oh, it's a killing contest, they weren't going to get into it anyway. Nope. Nope. I would argue... As a whole, not, you know, stepping away from predator hunting in general, as a whole, due to the huge increase in social media presence within hunters and people like Joe Rogan, all that, uh, there's been a huge spike in uh, new hunters, yeah. new shooters, new gun owners, everything, due to stuff like people like Joe Rogan and, uh, I don't know, putting a spotlight on it. Stop burying your head in the sand and hiding your shit that you're doing. Be proud of what you do. And we got in this in clay reads which will air before this one uh stop hiding it and stop just, just go, go away with that attitude of like if you i don't have to explain nothing to you maybe try to understand why they're asking the questions they're asking first now i'm 100 percent for if they're antis i mean i don't i don't engage with them i don't care a lot of times i make jokes about it 
Like, why are you being so mean to me? Stuff like that, because I think it's funny. But if it's someone who's on the fence and you're just going around tossing uh, the FU bomb on everybody, you are swaying people the wrong direction. Like, if they're, if they're, you know, I get this a lot with these reels. And they post about cows getting shot and so on and so forth. Like, why do y'all do this? What do you do with them after you're done? And so on and so forth. A lot of those people are people on the fence. And if I didn't take the time to explain to them, maybe I would have pushed them away from it. And, you know, I just don't believe in that uh, whole hide it and it's bad optics. It's it's bad optics when you have bad players, but you have that on both sides of the fence and, and everywhere. Uh, sports, hunting, everything. You're going you're gonna to have people who do stupid shit, who makes the, the sport look bad. But overwhelmingly, most people are pretty pretty smart nowadays because, I mean, a lot but, of it's due but to that the fact. Can, the same can be said in any, any sport. Yeah, absolutely. It's not, just, it's not just predator hunting. It's not just hunting. It's not just shooting that people can give that sport a bad name. Anybody that's involved in any sport can, give, can do something that puts a black eye on it. Yeah. And, you know, well, we it, doesn't that mean there's some responsibility to, uh, to like police the community from inside the community? Cause like, you probably don't see that with like polo. I doubt anybody's out there making, I bet there's giving like polo about kind of rock and roll player <laughs> <polos. laughs> like party animal and dark horse. Yes. Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, like, I is there, like, are there, any, are there any people ruining cricket for everybody? Probably. Yeah, probably. I mean, I feel like the, no, they probably do a good job of like the people, they like keep people certain people out right i'm talking about people from oklahoma right now honestly <laughs> i feel like the predator in oklahoma can... play cricket no oklahoma predator hunters <laughs> kind of ruining it for everybody right now there's one guy in oklahoma who just turned this shit off he's like oh they're not ready for I'm, uh, community. I'm sorry if you're if you're from oklahoma and you're one of the people who doesn't cheat i, I apologize so it's, it's probably also one guy he's like the one guy in oklahoma he's like fuck <laughs> I mean, I feel like the predator hunting community does a pretty good job at uh, kind of running off the shitheads. Yeah, I think it happens. I mean, sometimes it, it, may, it, it takes may take some bit. time, but it happens. I mean, you, you, eventually you're going to yeah. get found out. Yeah, you can get run off, and uh, usually when you post up a uh, a picture that's in poor taste, uh, well, on TPH we just delete the shit. But yeah, in other well, groups, it, it's kind of weird though because you're seeing this with. Uh, it seems like a lot's happened recently with all these uh, high profile, not not predator hunters but hunters in general like right getting found out for poaching like you know right that's a whole oh yeah that's always been happening for years like some of the worst stories come from tv hunters and whatnot but that's found because of they're putting uh, that's the interesting thing they're putting themselves out there in the the communities finding out and calling oh yeah scrutinizing you for everything versus if it was just hide and and don't post so I think uh, the the greatest example of why we don't need to hide predator hunting contests and so on and so forth. Let's look at trapping. Yes, it's still live, but how many people are getting into it now? Yeah. Virtually none. I mean, yeah. how many of those guys are super quiet about what they do? Oh, it's it's for yeah. They don't it, they don't know, want to talk about any of it. They're all about tradition and everything else, and I think that's great. And you know, trapping is not for me, but I think it's cool. I love talking to trappers. Yeah. But the fact that they've been so secretive about it, it's you're not getting like right now. Is it hasn't when done them any favors. No, right now is when you should be. Uh, uh, I don't know, teaching people about trapping and showing them stuff. Like you see stuff every once in a while, but as a whole, it's a bunch of older guys and they're trying to keep it a secret. And guess what? That's why your shit's dying out. That's why your your grandkids kids probably won't even know nothing about trapping. Right. Because y'all have, y'all have decided to hide in the shadows, and the more they hide, the more the, yeah. the antis they don't have a voice get get more into it and more into it, and they're slowly taking away more and more more and more tools that a trapper has yes. at his disposal. I mean, to be able to do the job that they're trying to do, yeah, just just being quiet about it, they think they're doing themselves a favor. When in all actuality, you've got so many antis going against them that there's no voice speaking up for it. Yeah, there's no. If you don't have a voice speaking for it, then the powers that be are going to listen to the squeaky wheel. Yes. You know, if you're not squeaking yourself, then you're not going to get any attention. Right. Yeah, you know, I, I just think that's a, it's an old me- way of thinking. It's an old mentality. The same thing goes with the people who are like. I can't tell you my sounds because they're secrets. Well, before social media came about, <laughs> and I'm not the, I mean, 
Yeah, social media has ruined a whole lot of things in life. But before social media came about, who are you hearing that that spoke for hunting and spoke for right. shooting? I mean, Ted Nugent was it. Yeah. That was the only person you knew of. Yeah. That was you'd actually see on a major news network having a debate about the subject right. with whoever, whether it be a, a, the reporter that's interviewing him or, or actually having a debate on a some some format. Right. Yeah, I mean, I just I don't know. It's it's just old mentality, a way of thinking, and it's not it's not a it's not a successful campaign. Just hiding it, keeping it secret. Uh, no, I think within good taste, we should promote it more. Like I'm all for again. I'm not a contest hunter. I don't care nothing about them. Well, hunting one every once in a while. Just because you can't uh, win. Maybe. Would you like to respond to the allegations that you've never won a predator hunting contest? I have it. Yeah, so but not really allegations. That's but you have a predator hunting podcast. Why should we listen to you if you've never it's won? It's not called the Texas Predator Hunting Contest. Uh, whatever. But surely if you were a really good predator hunter, you could go and win a contest, right? Probably could. But you don't. Nope. Interesting. <laughs> Continue. I just want to I just wanted to point out that Wade's never won a contest. I haven't. Yet he speaks no as like an authority. I am an authority. But how do we know you've never won a contest? What is it what is it, what does that have to do with anything? Predator hunting is ask, not just contest. Do you hunting. wait ask how you don't even have people. a belt buckle. I can get one made. <laughs> how, makes you feel better. Ask how many people I've helped win a contest. It's probably quite a few. Also, the ammo. You're like Obama. That you didn't you didn't win that. Wade won that contest for you. Okay. It's fun. Whatever. It's just something he's always like. You never want to go do this. I mean, I probably should. So he could. I could totally win a win a contest if I wanted to. Just. I mean, I probably could. At least one. I mean, if, I, if I hunted enough, I'd eventually fucking win one, I'd imagine. But, I mean, I probably should. You ready for this next part? I just can't find anybody as good as me to go hunt with me to win a contest. Oh, no, I know a few people. People that have probably already won contests. I don't know. So you would just win no, a contest no. in their wake? Some of them definitely have. But anyways, I mean... <laughs> I probably should. Do you? Do, what do you think, Kyle? You know what? Do people, what do people hunting would it, contest? Would it excel my notoriety if I no. have? Okay, no. Kyle says no, and you're stupid. Well, if you want a contest, we could uh, get some more stuff for the set. So I've won contests. Yeah. Is there anybody in this world that could, besides me and the guys I was hunting with, that can look and go, "Oh yeah, I remember when Kyle Trawick won one big gray or won a contest here"? Or blah, do blah, you blah? just want me to get a fake trophy made? I'm just saying, what, what do people in the comments think? Does is Wade would he be better of an authority if he won a contest? No. Should I? I don't think so. Is it not verification of your skills? No. I, if I was like self proclaimed the greatest contest hunter ever, I should probably have a few wins underneath my belt. But it's more. I just speak in generalities. Yeah. I just. I, interesting. I, I'll, I'll I be have, interested to know what people think on this. Well, I'm more making. Uh, it's a shtick, yes. Well, it's not a shtick. It's this is in other disciplines. This is very much a thing, right? Yes. Like if you can't back up your right, how good you are with a, with a with a winning a competition, how good are you really? It, right. So it's, I, I mean, know. I get I, it. I find it interesting. I get it. Dan Marino went to the Hall of Fame, never won a Super Bowl. <laughs> are you calling me Dan Marino? No, What's I'm that? just using. Nice I'm, just, I'm, just another, sport? I'm just throwing another sporting metaphor out we there. We don't get just, that just for. Sport. <laughs> for shits and grins. So you never won a Super Bowl? No, I never won a Super Bowl, no. No, no, this guy. Who, who, <laughs> Dan who Marino. I even know who Dan supposed Marino to know who is. is. Laces out, Dan. Laces out. Come what? on. Laces out, what does that mean? You've never seen Ace Ventura? He was a baby when it came out. I've Did seen Ace try? Ventura. That's, I don't, that's not what I remember from the movie. Oh, it was well. kind of like the main it's, yeah, plot. It was the plot of the whole... whole I, I'm pretty sure the plot was, uh, was uh, Jim Carrey being Ace Ventura. I don't remember. Had a lot to do with Dan Marino. Yeah, that was an act. That's an actor. That's not a plot. Yeah. No, but it means a real sense of tension between you two. Yeah, I'm really uh, he upset. He wouldn't even talk uh, to me when you weren't in here. He's pissed at me about something. Yeah, my friend it's Daniel told me that you're completely wrong. Were like this. <laughs> I mean, I, he, he must have got hurt. Like, I don't know what you wanted to talk about. What do we have to talk about? We don't really align on we're any interest. We're talking about a lot of things here. 
I was over here on my computer talking to people on the internet. They they, they get me. <laughs> <laughs> what autism group are you in right now? Uh, we're talking about Steven Crowder. He just uh, released how uh, basically Ben Shapiro is a, a cuck. Um, uh, I don't even want to get into that. Yeah, wow. it's a whole other thing. It's that's that. Uh, that's that community culture bullshit. Uh, this is, a, this I is follow pretty, politics enough. I know what he's talking. Who he's talking about? And I, well, I haven't seen you, that you know who particularly. Do you know who Stephen Crowder is? Yeah, I watch so, Stephen Crowder stuff. You know, Change my mind, guy. You know, uh, obviously Ben Shapiro has his own platform. Yeah, I watch. I watch Ben Shapiro. Essentially, stuff. Uh, Crowder just published because he left the blaze and he was work doing like contract negotiations with. Uh, sounds like it's the Daily Wire, and they're just like. As is one would expect from somebody like Ben Shapiro, they're completely trying to screw him over on the contract. Like, wait, what do you mean? Yeah, you know, just people like Ben Shapiro. He's, he seems very like a be good at contract negotiations, not for any particular reason. Where were we at? We were talking about predator contest, and then he somehow turned it into Stephen Crowder. It's autistic. Got some violence in him today. It's gonna. It? He's autistic. It's spicing it up. He has Spice. no control over those feelings he's and emotions. Spicy. It's autistic. I'm artistic. It's spicy autistic. Yeah. Minus the R. Put a U in. But spicy. Yeah. Sometimes they yeah. are. Moving on. So, now what was we kind of at? We were talking about you uh, not hunting predator contests. Oh, yeah. We Someone attacked about. me over there. Yes. Uh, You are going to leave in that part about drop the comments, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, probably. I would be interested to hear people's thoughts. I mean, I'm not above reproach. Uh, and there, I mean, I would like to eventually. I've seen you drive the morning after hunt, hunting all night. Oh, no, 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 no. I can't be that person. No. <laughs> let's, let's, you would uh, you would not make it. Once I'm done, I'm done. I'll, I'll stay up. Oh, I'll, I've seen. I'll run to every stand. I'll stay up all night in that <clears> rack, everything. But when daylight next day hits, someone else got to drive it. Well, that, that's what I was getting at the other day. I've it's been not that like guy before. you, you really don't need anybody else. Cause you're so good. Right. So unless you're going after numbers, it's not, you have to be crazy with it. So like I can just chauffeur you and just, then you just, yeah. I mean, I guess it depends on, uh, there's nothing wrong with just being a predator hunter and not being a cop. I, I would, Here's my <clears throat> biggest thing with content. He told me he was going to win me a belt buckle, Kyle. <laughs> this, now we're getting to the true nature of his anger. Yeah, <laughs> he said he would win me one, buckle. and he still hasn't. But anyways, once we're better staffed, and I can you know go do things. Because again, it takes me I have to have my, my prep time. I need at least a week prior to the contest to completely prepare all the gear and everything else. I need lots more time to uh, go scout and everything else because I don't want to do something. I'm going to do it right. Like I'm, gonna, I'm going to go in this, you know, completely prepared, ready to go. It sounds like a lot of cope. No, I'm just explaining you the process. You know it, so just get out. No, of here you with like that cope talk. What if I told you like, that, hey, that's what, not just what, contest what you... hunting with you though. That's just that's just you hunting. Oh, I mean, I mean yeah. crap. If we were going to go to just pick the location and go hunt this weekend, you'd have been prepping starting last week. But, like, isn't that just a mental thing we need to overcome? Because if I told you I have a badass piece of land right now, go get ready to hunt, you could be ready in, like, 30 minutes. Technically, yes, because all the gear is already packed. Yes. Because <laughs> everything's already prepped. That's what I'm giving you. It's just, like, what, like in terms of the, in terms of the, the, the big whatever. Fun not the hunting v- is one thing. Contest hunting is a whole nother thing. But isn't this getting to the root of the issue? Is you're preventing your – it's you're almost, like, self-sabotaging your own contest wins. Because if you just, like, would just go hunt – you could it win. Never fails. But you mentally think it's something different than normal hunting, which it no, necessarily no, no. isn't. Oh, it is. No, no, it's definitely well, different. Well, it, it is if you're going I wish for. I could be that way and be like, oh, it's no different than fun hunting. But I can't. No. I can't. I it, and it's just it's it goes back to the competitiveness. Like if I'm going out varmint hunting, me and you can go out varmint hunting and have a good time, right. cut up, shoot the breeze. If we're in the middle of a stand and we bust out laughing about something right. someone did that was stupid, yes. it, it's funny. Yes. It, you throw in a contest situation and the competitiveness comes out. Right. And I turn it into a job. And right. I don't just turn it into a job for me. Everyone else that's with me, <laughs> is it's I'm turning it into a job for them too. Right. But making, that's what I'm getting at because, because you do that. I it not fun for people that hunt with me in a contest. And Aren't I'm, you I'm making getting, your odds worse though by doing that? No. How is that helping anything? <laughs> I, w- I would say that it, de- it depends on what type of contest you're hunting. 
Now, the way he hunts it, uh, it's probably super effective. Uh, no wasted time and everything like that. Because it, in contests, like if you're competitive. Now, I will say this. When it comes to us contests, we don't push like some people do. Right. We're, you know, but it's. Well, what I'm getting, yeah. unless it's specifically hunting for the numbers, any of the other types of contests that aren't specifically you have to have the most. Isn't your behavior just sabotaging your own ability to win? Because you haven't won yet. I with don't that know strategy. if it's sabotaging me, but it probably makes it less well, fun. I'm talking to him. Well, I'm saying you haven't like what if you just approach contest hunting like normal hunting? <laughs> because I mean, as we've talked through multiple of these podcasts and all these reels, it's if like you're when a competitive it's, when, person, it just takes over. Okay, but what I'm getting at out is that's what I'm getting at is if you if you if you suppress that inhibition we've talked about <laughs> how so much of it is just when it's on it has to be yes. on yeah but if it if if the if the animals aren't there and it's not on why take it so seriously because it seems like the because there's so money, to win you just have to be because there because there's money involved that's all it boils down to but that's, that's what i'm getting that's, at isn't that's that what, isn't that sabotaging that it, your that own ability it, to win the money that makes it a competition and when the competition gets on i get competitive and i'm gonna push buttons that probably don't need to be pushed during the time I'm hunting. And I, yeah, I'm a little bit of an asshole when I'm in a rack with, and I'm, and I'm hunting contests and you know what? Like you know, part of having a problem is being able to admit it. So you know what? <laughs> no, okay. But so take it two steps forward from what you were just saying is, cause this is where Wade's at is like, Oh, it's, I'm so much of an asshole and it's such an effort for me to do this. I'm not going to do it in the first place. But if you would just, not put all that extra effort and not be an asshole and just go out and contest hunt and have fun. I've tried. I do try. It just, it, something goes wrong and then the, the switch flips. Yeah. Do you, do you, are you picking up anything I'm putting down? Oh, I hear you. Is it like, it a, all sounds it's great. Not, it's not easy just to turn that switch off though. Let me teach you guys how to not put any effort into things. <laughs> what a terrible person he is. You got to be cool. You smoke, you know this. You just be, just be chill. Just, just be chill. You don't have to I take mean, everything so it, fucking seriously. I will say this. I've learned to <clears throat> relax a lot more while hunting. You haven't been with me for a while, so you probably don't Oh, know I this. love the shit talk. Like, th that's fun to me. I know it's not to a well, lot of I people. Well, I know. Like, when we were hunting those contests, like, nobody probably wanted to be around me because I get in the same kind of mode. But comments. my point is acting that way. You know, getting all like uh, stressed and just like, oh, it's a contest. It's not going to make the animals come in any faster. No, it's not. No, it it's not going to make any more animals there. Can, that doesn't no. mean you. Can it's just not going it to add. It's not going to add ten pounds <laughs> to a cat. It does, but that doesn't mean you can just turn it off. So shouldn't I mean? What I'm getting at is the whole point, like with contest hunting, right? Because there's only going to be a few winners. Isn't it really about the friends you make along the way? It's sounding really dumb right now. <laughs> like isn't it about like the fun of hunting the like, fun is what it it's is. over what i'm getting at is, is that, and that's probably the the one reason that i'd ever contest hunt to start with is because you get to spend that time out there with your friends but by daylight they all think i'm an asshole and they don't want to hunt with me for a month they're all like cow go out there and fetch that animal yes because like, what, go off. is it just because you're like so yeah. focused on winning is that you're just hyper fake? Like, cause shouldn't it just be like, oh, I'm going to go hunt with my friends. And then we're going to go to weigh in and see a bunch of people and I have fun. I can't wait to get even more contest hunters in here so I can see Fitzy try to dissect the competitive nature. Yeah. Well, no, I'm getting at is I think are you like competitive about anything. I mean, Ben, honest question. I mean, are no, you, I, are you a, a competitive person? Oh, at anything? Like, yeah. hundred yeah, percent. Yes. I get like, if, especially if there's money involved, Wade's seen it like him and I will get in a little competition. Like <laughs> here's my point is though, is it, it seems like whenever it's you're so competitive that it makes you not compete, there's a problem. So if you just would go about it in a different way, you might actually have success where you don't have any. As in, as in, right? Like, oh, I can't contest hunt because it's going to take me, it's going to take me a gorillion years to prepare. I'm going to have to do all this stuff. Why not just like go enter in a contest and then just go hunt and have fun? I'm and, going to. No, yeah. This weekend. Are you going? Are you going to do it? Yeah. Okay. The only thing I'm going to do, since I'm already going, uh, since I'll be driving around the ranch anyways, looking for poachers, I'm going to make a few coon stents. That's it. going to try to kill a big coon. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that? That's the, it's, I'm not, I'm not overly preparing or anything like that, which I mean, my normal preparedness is probably overly prepared for most people, <laughs> but I'm not, it, you know, 
Um, basically just uh, donating money to the contest is what it is. But I mean, I would, okay. I would love to eventually, probably not next year, maybe the year after, is make a run at a bunch of contests. Like, I'm talking like every weekend. Double entering. like Screw that. I, I, I want, like I want sleep too much. Man. I want one season every goddamn weekend. And that's it. Like after that, I'll just do like the occasionals. But I, I, w- I want to, and it's mainly for like a, I don't know, kind of like a little research deal for something I'm working on. I just want, I want to make a hard run. Like I want to see what it's like for some of these guys. Cause there's a lot of people that do that. Oh yeah. There's a lot of people that count on winning as income. Yeah. They, they make a run every weekend from like January all the way through March, every weekend, multiple contests and all kinds of stuff. Like it's just go, 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 go. Yeah. Well, it probably it probably sounds like what I'm, I'm. It sounds like, and I'm going way out of the way to say it. So, and I'm, you know, sorry everybody who's listening. I'm like autistic, schizo, whatever. After everybody you've had in here and talking about it, it seems like the most important thing is to be is to have, as Clay Reed said, had your have your hook in the water, right? You got to be there. Yeah. If yeah. you want, if you want the big cat, you're going to have to be there. And it seems like there's this perception, like, oh, unless you're taking it, like. There might be a lot of people dissuaded from going out and hunting because it's like, oh, no, I'm not taking it seriously. Oh, no, I don't have this. I don't have the thermal. I don't have the rack. I don't right. have this. But it's like at the end of the day, none of that or how much you prepare is going to put a is, is going to make the animal be there. Now, there is there is a level of preparedness in terms of scouting and knowing what you're doing. Yeah. But if you don't take it so seriously, you just have fun and you'll probably... If if you approach it that way, you're going to be in more contests because it's not this fucking mountain right. to climb. You're going to be actually right. be out there I mean, hunting. I get what you're yeah, yeah. It, it and it is fun when it. It's usually when it turns into work. Well, it sounds is, like it sounds like it's fun for you, but you make it miserable for everybody else. Well, <laughs> you I'm, know, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Maybe sit Kyle. Here, I'm not going to sit here and say that's not true. <laughs> I, Maybe I mean, Kyle gets joy out of making everyone else miserable. No, no we didn't take away. It's fun. It's because, just, well, because when okay. we contest, huh? let, let me let me throw a for instance out there. That's not what Daniel you, you said. You take a certain contest, everybody can be having a great time. You know, you're killing animals. All of a sudden, it shuts off, and you go three, four, five, six hours, and you don't see it set of eyes at night, or you don't see it in the daytime, or whatever. And then the freaking fog sets in, and now everybody's on edge. Everybody's pissy right. because they've all got money tied into it. Everybody's not in the best of moods at this point anyway because it's already three or four o'clock in the morning. You've been fighting fog for two and a half, three hours. You're you know, you haven't seen a set of eyes or when you did, it was so close that, you know, it was like, Oh crap right here. And then by the time you get the gun on him, he's gone because all he had to do is move 10 feet further away and you can't see right. him through the freaking fog and people start getting edgy. And then someone does something wrong, says something wrong. And then the next thing, you know, I'm usually the one that says something wrong <laughs> and, and then everything goes to shit right there. I think we're making some really major breakthroughs. Yeah. And how does that make you feel Kyle? How does I, it make you feel? Like I said, I if, I know my faults. I know that I, this is how I am. And all I can do is apologize on Monday when I get... <laughs> when he gets some Well, money. that's not all when you... I get you know what, Kyle? Uh, I, know you, I know you old white people don't believe in therapy. And I don't want you to go to therapy. But I want you to think about that. What you just said, right? Like, you know how you are. You know how you're going to react. You ever thought about, like, just talking to your team beforehand? Like, hey, guys. Or yes. contest hunting. I have, I have talked to my team. I've been like, Look, or, I apologize right now for anything that I'm going to say in the next 24 to 36 hours, however long we're depending on, you know. But, is it, is it, but, is, but that's kind of a dickhead way to do it. Why don't, like, if you're in the moment and, you know, you lash out at somebody, when just, you know, I'm sorry, I'm kind of frustrated. I know what's the conditions suck out here and we're all, don't this all sucks. This is what you do. <laughs> After everything mean you say, you got to say with all due respect. I haven't even it's thought their about fault that. if they get mad because yeah. you said it with all due respect. It's in the Geneva Convention. <laughs> Why don't you just like, man? I'm not. You know, I'm getting kind of frustrated with this guys. How are how are how are y'all feeling right now? Maybe you guys maybe maybe you're, you can make some real breakthroughs with your friendship. Uh, our last listener just turned it off with all like <laughs> yeah all that crazy talk. What I'm getting at is <laughs> stop making it miserable for everybody else. I try just not to, but I, I've you know sometimes your I, personality is just your personality. I assure you. What's being discussed right now runs rampant across contest hunters. Oh yeah, I assure you. What's and that's my point I, is I, I promise you guys you, after are every contest. There is somebody that's not going to hunt with somebody again <laughs> after that contest. <laughs> well, and I'm I'm going to put a little asterisk on this because when it comes to things like going like putting up like the big numbers, 
sorry, you're just gonna have to fucking not be a pussy. You're gonna yes. have to just yeah. When we're talking, okay, I get like I get the notion of if we're just gonna go for the minimal and the big cat. If you're throwing you're throwing your hat in the ring to win a big cat, you know it's just it's just I mean, more about doing it. It doesn't have to be about, big cat. It can be any contest. If we're talking about big cat, that's gonna take even more preparation for me. Yeah, we're for you, because you're like, you're like, I have to guarantee that I have a chance at winning. Exactly. Where it's, where it's just I'm, like. I'm going to want to have at least a half dozen larger frame cats spotted. If I'm going to say my goal is to go kill this big bob cat, we're talking about way more scouting. And here's my point but to I can, you. But it's also a much leisure, leisure hunt. And here's my point to you. God, here You've never go. won one. I've only hunted like three exactly because you're like i just can't do it unless i have all this preparation and i've never hunted the one that we actually went after a big cat i called some in i wasn't shooting and uh the one didn't get shot yeah but it's fine it was a young young man he got a little excited maybe spooked it off it's fine uh, I, I will say, when I've been contest hunting with you, and it's because of the crowd that we're contest hunting with, it's always been pleasant. It was the one time we were at the one place that was, I mean, it was like negative 20, and it was freezing and cold, and, you know, I never got out of the rack, but it was just like, this sucks, but it's fun. <laughs> I don't think everybody else felt the same way I did, because you're a bit of an asshole, but. Yeah, I'm an acquired taste, especially then. I mean, again. You've gotten better, though. So that's what I'm saying. It's probably even better to contest hunt with you. I mean, I, I've, because of some conversations that's been had with me after contests. Um, I have tried to get better and I bite my tongue and I just sit over and grip my teeth through a lot of things. But Jeez, then, Kyle, you need to calm down. I, I'm a little Most high, of the time I'm talking shit because I think it's funny. I'm, I'm, a, little, like I'm a little high strong. <laughs> I, uh, well, here's the deal. Y'all are, and especially Kyle, y'all are getting older. <laughs> so. <laughs> like, that little, like the little asterisk especially kyle especially kyle well yeah it's like i don't it's it's kind of like what we were talking about earlier how old uh, do you think i am anyway like i don't know how it's possible that you're getting older but you somehow oh are <laughs> um you guys have perspective you guys have been doing this a while so there's a lot of pe- i would assume like i'm sure we have a a younger predisposed audience just because inherently younger people are going to be watching stuff like this and so <laughs> you guys can kind of lend that perspective as you guys have felt like you guys have mellowed out which means that there's a reason you guys have mellowed out because you guys wouldn't mellow out if you didn't think that it would help. So, eh. I'm mellowed out because there wasn't nobody going to want to hunt with me anymore. If I did. <laughs> God, Kyle. I've just mellowed out because I'm just like, eh, people are going to mess up. People, yeah. People are going to mess up. People are not going to do things like I think they should do. And I should just be fine with that. I should most just not most care. of the time, it's, it's, it all stems from me saying something and being taken wrong. So yeah, Poor my my tone, my tone of voice sometimes gets. Uh, to, I don't mean anything by it. Yeah, you need an anger translator. And, and then, yes, <laughs> like I just need to. I need to communicate with everybody via text while I'm in a hunting <laughs> contest. That way, there's no tone of voice with it. And it's usually the the inverse. Like usually, text people take the wrong way. Kyle's like, I need to text this. Shush. Yes. I need to text you something. So you well, it, think, it doesn't so help. You it takes him so, so you long think to text when I say it. You know, he's got that, like, that I, T9. I, I say old something, something and then it's like, well, I don't, I don't even mean anything by it with, when it comes out. Okay. <sighs> and then if it pisses somebody off, it doesn't help that I think that's hilarious. So wait, I think what see, we're talking about two different things. I'm talking about like, you know, cause you guys originally asked, how am I doing? Right, and there's this thing, and I'm and wow, I know we just jumped way the hell back. Well, no, no, because I'm about to I'm gonna it's put gonna a bow it on it. Come together. I'm gonna put a bow on it, and I'm gonna shut the fuck up and let you talk for the rest of the podcast. No, I have other things I need you to come in. Oh, okay, okay, cool. I can do on those. What I'm getting at is it's like, it's like this is a this is actually a cry for help for me because I know you know that I know that you can strive for perfection for something in such a way that it prevents you from doing it in the first place. <sighs> That's and this not, is it's something. Not my case. Oh no, no, you have this too. I, t- I, d- yes, because you're no. like you're like I know if I don't, like it's like it's a form. It's actually a, a form of OCD. Is I have to put a hundred percent in this, otherwise I won't do it. Yeah. So the thing never gets done. Yeah. No. Well, and so what we're, well, I'm saying with, with you, I'm saying, 
in the forms that this takes place with you, it's with things like doing this contest. Yeah. Versus, I mean, you're looking at me and saying it's like getting out of bed at a reasonable time. <laughs> and while the circumstances are not the same, the what the underlying I mean, yes. thing there. I, I agree with that. But it, also, it's not... Mm. Well, and so, I just feel like if I'm going to, if I'm going, there's also like, like it or not, I'm not patting myself on the back. There's a, there's a things attached. If I say I'm hunting contest so, and I, I feel yeah, as if I do not, like if I don't obsess about this to the point to where everything is perfect and I give it just all, my all. Yeah, I feel like I'm just going to be looked down upon. I don't don't know. That's, you know, and it's easy to, I think it's easy to look at, because obviously you do have a very specific situation that does make that true. But I think something is, there's probably a lot of people even listening to this who are interested in contest hunting or don't do it a lot. They probably feel the same way. They're like, it's that like, I don't want to go embarrass myself. Yeah, 100%. And so it prevents them from doing it in the first place. Yeah. Well, it's just like, I get it. Yeah, it's kind of it's just perspective is like everybody's just going out there, you know. Well, the, here, if you here's, here's if you another, don't win, it's not a direct reflection of who you are as a human being. It shouldn't a, be. Here, it's it okay to it just go be. hunt. It shouldn't be. But here's what'll happen: Wade goes and hunts. A, you know, let's just say he goes and hunts ten contests this year. You're talking about getting intense. That's semi intense, okay? And okay, you don't win any of them. There's going to be people that go to those contests. <laughs> It, uh, I ain't watching his damn podcast anymore. He don't know what the hell he's on. He can't even win a contest. I'll have I mean, 10 of them that he was And you know who those people are? Five. You know who those people are? Fucking assholes. Yeah. Who cares yeah, what I mean, they think? Uh, yeah, and that was, what I was say. And that was yes. this, Okay, now I'm explaining the joke. That's the whole shtick with the how many contests have you even won? Because the thing is, if you've won a million contests, there's a bunch of people who've won a bunch of contests, and I would never listen to advice from them just because If, if you won that more, many, then people start accusing you of cheating. That's true. Yeah. What I'm getting at is you should take advice on the front of it. Like you should be able to like, there's going to be a lot of advice that he has despite never having won a contest that like, as he said, how many people have won contests? Cause my, like I've helped them out. Right. Like right. you should be able to take advice from anywhere. You don't have to have be some pedigree. I have a 10 time world champion right. coyote contest, but it's not actually the world. Cause that's actually owned by somebody else. So it's like regional coyote contest yes that's a perfect goddamn segue into our next topic yeah. so what i'm getting at is it's all like you don't have to it, it doesn't matter just just do things stop self-sabotaging <laughs> and again this is all because you asked me how i'm doing this is me everything i've said is me talking to myself stop self-sabotaging just do things i want you to listen to this podcast yeah I need to, this is the one i'll go listen back to <laughs> So funny that you mentioned that it's kind of like, like my next direction is a contest. It's safe to say starting, well, they start earlier. It seems like every year, but primarily January through March, which is technically after deer season's over. A lot of people can go hunt their deer laces and so on and so forth. You get like, I don't know. Right now we have 23 in the events for the like next two weeks or something like that. And most of them nowadays are doing multiple contests uh, for each month and so on and so forth. And we talked, we briefly talked about this uh, last night. I feel as it pertains to contest again, let's stop. Let's stop hiding it. Let's stop being hush hush about it. Let's start uh, unifying some things. Let's uh, let's put together a series. Yeah. Let's put together a series. You know, what that looks like. And when this podcast comes out, I'm going to open up a dialect in TPH about it. And I'm also going to start reaching out to a lot of the promoters and kind of start running some ideas about them, see what they think. Because I think, you know, what's the surefire? I mean, I don't think we'll really ever have to worry about it in Texas, but you never know. Because, I mean, if we're if we're hiding it from everybody like these old timers want us to do, it would it would definitely eventually go away. Yeah, but if we're upfront about it and we're classy about it, I think it's going to be around. I mean, what about bash fishing tournaments? What about uh, all these other tournaments that they have that nobody seems to have a problem with? Yeah, a bunch of people have problems with. I mean, well, 
and that's and that's like, kind of we we get into this. I don't and know they, when they this can't is, say that it's it's because well the Varmint hunters are cheating. <laughs> if there's if if it's a tournament, I don't care what tournament it is. There's going to be someone try to cheat. Yeah, yeah. Will they succeed? Occasionally, I'm sure they do. Yeah. I think in a lot of cases, then the I think most of the wins are legit. I think right. most of your people out there, the vast majority of them, are doing it legit. I right. mean, there's no you know, ill will meant in anything they do, but then you got a handful that will always ruin it, but people. that's going to be in any sport you've got. Yeah, absolutely. What were you going to say? I was going to say it's, we, I don't know when this gets published because I think we talked about this slightly with Clay Reed. Yes. Is one of the things is you don't really see, there's not a lot, mind you, cancel cultures at an all time high. But there's, it doesn't seem like there's a lot more of that, like, oh my God, this person circulated on the internet. People, I think as a whole, the average person has kind of grown to like, accept like hunting is out there and they're kind of desensitized to the, the Cecil the lions. Yeah. And what, what, you know, I think you could probably partially explain that, that phenomenon of people getting put on blast for hunting is, uh, it was the coming out of the closet moment for hunters yes. because because they had not posted any of it, the average person was so clueless on what they were looking at, they got so outraged. Yeah. But now we're kind of past that. Yeah. And it seems like it seems like now, and this is coming from the perspective of a non hunter, hunting is bigger than it's ever been. Yeah. So I mean, realistically, <laughs> if anything, we've kind of proven the old timers wrong already. Yeah. 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 I mean, look at look at all the people the sudden influx in people going to Africa and hunting. Yeah. You don't see none of that shit anymore. It's because people weren't afraid to post these pictures on social media and they weren't afraid to talk about it. Like, Hey, you know, this isn't just like blood sport and this isn't goddamn Lion King. This isn't none of that Disney bullshit. This is real life shit. Like this line was super old. It was about to die. Why not? Why shouldn't these African villages and so on and so forth make all the money off this shit? Some of, that's their money for the year. Some of them. And, and it's also feeding them. It's also like uh, a very well managed management area. Yeah. Now people are like, "Oh, high fence." Well, it may be high fence, but it may be like several million acres of high yeah. fence. Like, and they put that high fence up not to keep the animals in; it's more to keep the poachers yes, out. Yes, and like you know, all these hunts go like the money from the, the profit from these hunts and everything goes to these anti poaching people and all this other stuff. Like. It's it's just the thing of the past, like people getting upset about it. It seems. I mean, I'm sure there's still there's always going to be those groups, but when you if you remember like Cecil the Lion and all that shit, like everybody was kind of like, uh, and then, you know. But nowadays, it's just it doesn't seem like it. It just kind of proves the thought and theory of why hide it, why not get out there and promote it, like promote it classy. I, I guess is what you say, but but only that if you want to really well, disincentivize the worst aspects of it is having that visibility. Because there is probably some stuff with, you know, if we're all hiding, there's probably people doing some really fucked up stuff. Yeah. But if if everything's more open and honest, you can kind of get to a point where there's always going to be people who kind of have a distaste. Like, right. I, I mean, it doesn't, it, it doesn't really do anything for me to see 100 piled up bodies, but it's kind of like, it's just not my thing. And I think given, you know, <laughs> given enough information, people kind of find the same thing. And it doesn't matter how classy you promote it. You're going... It, it depends on the platform you're on. Right. And that and that can mean different pages on the same social media platform. Right. So, yeah, you can post your stuff on TPH. We're going to keep anybody that comes in there and is like, well, I hope you're, you, I hope someday your kids get eaten by, it. Right. you know, it, they want, you know, you got those people that come there and spew the vile hatred of, oh, well, I, I just assume that you die and your kids die and because, <laughs> because you killed this animal. You know, Cecil yeah. the Lions is a prime example. You know, he got posted. The guy wasn't. I mean, it was a tasteful picture. Yeah, it wasn't like he went out there and and was displaying a softball size exit wound right. coming out of the other side of the lion's head or shoulder or gut or wherever the heck he hit the thing. It was, you know, here's this is here's my trophy. You know, check it out. And you know, good God, how many death threats did that guy get over the next I don't three know. years? That shit was crazy. <laughs> but I mean. Back to the contest thing. We kind of just went off on a whole other tangent, but that's fine. Back to the contest thing. I think it's time for, they're getting so popular. I think it's time for things to start evolving. And, you know, maybe I'm the only one, 
but I feel like I'm probably not. It's time to evolve the sport of contest hunting a little bit. Like, let's start working towards a, a general direction, kind of like me and you talked about last night. Let's let's look at uh, bass fishing tournaments. Like, look how you know the the great representation of everything is and uh, all that yeah, stuff. It's and the there's event. A series. It's the event as much as as it is the contest. Yes, and you know that's another thing is like. People have these preconceived notions by uh, social media platforms because you're not talking face to face. But if we start really promoting these contests, so like I said, like I said, I think the best way to go about it is creating some sort of series, and we would slow roll it. We start out with just a few and add on as we go. Like once people start getting on the same, uh, same area, like we start building upon this and making it more of a event, the weigh in and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, you start inviting people, other hunters who who. You know, because there's plenty of hunters that are on the fence about predator hunting, which don't make no sense to me. They just don't know. They've never been, they've never taken and shown. Like, they never, nobody's ever told them, like, hey, most of your fawn crops probably getting eaten by predators. You know, they, they just might be on the fence about predator hunting because they don't know any better. Well, if you create these series and you make the weigh ins more of an event yes. for not just for your, well, not just the way you can make the whole comp contest. Yes. You can have yes. vendors there. Like we talked about from the time that people check in on Friday until the time the events over with on Sunday, See, you know, that, you have an MC up there who's announcing, you know, yep. this, this team, blah, blah, blah is coming in. And you know, you, you, weigh their animals right there just like they would in a bass tournament you know they reach in there in that bass boat and they yeah. pull out their biggest fish last you know everybody cheers it's a big it's a big deal it's a it's a it's a whole show it's a spectacle it's a, it's a yes. spectacle that's there you go that's it's the what, spectacle of it that everybody around you know and, and like we talked about have you know get get some food vendors bring some food trucks in do well i think the biggest issue like that. i mean it, get the <laughs> get the vendors there to 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 promote their stuff and yeah and you know it, it's like we talked about, you're where else take whitetail hunting, just like we were talking about. You don't get a large group of whitetail hunters in the same spot unless there's this planned convention that was planned and it's been in the books and it's been advertised for months. Yeah. But predator hunters can get fifteen days notice, hey, there's I want to go hunt this contest, and you may have fifty teams show up and uh to to the actual way in. But each team's got two to four people on it. Yeah. So sometimes they're bringing their wife. And sometimes, kids and yeah, their wife else. and kids are showing up. You know, they want to come see the they want to come see the stuff. But there's really not a whole lot for them to do but stand around and and shoot the breeze with other people around. And no, and it, it you know, and you know, like my wife, she's gonna come up there and stand by me just like Brooke would do with you. There's really nobody there that they know. Right. We know people because we've been around it. Now I've I've contest hunted for I don't know. 10 15 you know probably 15 years so yeah you get to know people there you might you have relationships at these places and yeah that may be the only time you see them or only time you talk to them in a year but man you can start, sit there and kind of get caught up you know yeah. it's and but you know my wife she may she may drive us up there it's just so we don't have to drive back right you know we'll stop by the house jump in another truck throw our all of our our animals in the in the back of that one truck and she'll drive us up there and drive us back but there's really nothing for her to do while we're there right and there's and i'm sure that's happens in a lot of cases not just with wives but sons dads <laughs> you know friends in general so you you may have 50 60 extra people there yeah and on, at a big contest or more if they if the kids load up and then but there's really nothing for them to do but stand right. there and watch people with yeah. animals and they're not really it's not getting much out of it no it's it's just a uh, i mean the the camaraderie that it's present at the way in is pretty substantial yes uh, you get to talk to again. You see people like once, twice a year, maybe three times. You hunt all three contests. Uh, that's the only time you get to see them. You get to bullshit, and it's fun, and everything else. But it, there are there's generally a few, few extra to several extra people there. They're like driving someone else or someone's kids, what have you. There's it's an excellent opportunity, especially if someone were, were to put together a series. Now, upon this, we I've probably already started talking to some folks and everything else. It's kind of like an idea that's just now kind of hatching, which it's nothing new, but the, the way I'm wanting to do it is kind of new. It's like, okay, I want to go uh, push forward for contests. I want to be a – I don't want to be like – I don't want to put on a contest. We've talked about except for this series. Now, it's just very very much in its infancy. 
of the planning process, the idea process. Starting out, we just team up with a few contest promoters. Specifically, I would like to have one that has maybe three contests for the January, February, March. So you can like create this series. We kind of, it's very, very small, but we'll start building upon the vendors and everything else. Kind of testing that, like get some more vendors into the weigh-in, starting out just the weigh-in. And then we'll kind of build upon that. Like if, if it's received well and it's going good, we'll start building upon that to where I 100% think there's no reason why you could look up, why you couldn't look up maybe five to 10 years down the road and have this pretty major event, the series itself, to where your your main hunters in this series, they're almost like superstars. Yeah. And again, yeah, it's, it's really putting people out in the spotlight. Like at that point in time, like you're talking about some pretty good coverage and everything else. Like it's really putting people in the spotlight. But if you, if you uh, push the contest this direction, I think once you get to that point, there's no turn back. Like it's once it has a lot of national attention from it, cause you, what you end up with is like some sort of uh, coverage for YouTube or maybe even TV at that point, maybe 10 years, 10 years down the road, we look up and there's massive vendor event from Friday all the way through Sunday. And we do like that very last part of the series where it's a single contest. It's like yeah, this big deal. Actual people coming in that aren't hunting the contest that want to go and, and see, go see the vendors go through. Yes. The booth. And that's, and that's the goal. It's, it, it, you know, one thing leads to another. And what it ends up leading to is like a lot of these vendors who have, have just like very lazily supported contests. It's almost like some of them are, don't really want to know they support contests and so they don't put too much towards it, but they do because they feel obligated. Yeah. I'm not going to say any names, but it happens because that's one thing I've noticed going to these weigh-ins, especially something like big cat. There's like. I a, a ton of people there. I mean, the, the last one I went to, there might have been like 200, 300 people total. I mean, there's a lot of people. Yeah. Because, I mean, they'll have. And, and with the right promotion and the right things el- other than just the contest going on around it, you could be a thousand. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm sitting here and I'm looking at it. I'm just like, with this many people showing up to weigh in, the prize table is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, yeah, these sponsors got their names on a banner. But why? There was a few companies there. I'm not saying there wasn't. Like yeah. I, th- I want to say Acufire was there, and maybe Diligent. I, f- I feel so, like Diligent was. I have, a, I have a big question for you. This this kind of set the tone of, you know, how much of contest hunting is people who like predator hunting, versus how many people are in it for the ridiculous pot and like the crossover there, like how many people? Because <laughs> you have these, you know, fifty thousand dollar plus and. Yeah, I, I mean, you're, I, it's funny. I remember back in the day, people go like retrospectively, people who had no business like, predator hunting, <laughs> who were just like, "Oh, I got you know signed up for a team, and we're gonna go do this." And I want to know where a cat is, and it's yeah. like, it was like, it's a, it, to me to some extent, there's there's gonna be some percentage of people who are in it for quote unquote the wrong reason, right, right, where, where it attracts the the cheaters. But yeah, you know, it sounds like what kind of almost you know tying back to what what I was saying is you you turn into this like hyper competition versus shouldn't it just be a celebration of predator hunting yes with this you know what sounds like a festival of almost of of vendors and things and it it seems like if you were to almost do that where could you do that where you didn't have massive like you still had like really crazy good prizes but it's not fifty thousand dollar pot you know how well i mean i think i think what you do is you you know there's always because i think we definitely need to have a conversation after this podcast that is more specific about I, there's some things that you've said that I'm like, Oh, where I have like my brain's taking, but I don't want to put it out, put put it out there necessarily. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really interested in the reception. About what am I, I'm putting out? Cause it's yeah. yeah. I mean, well, cause I'm really interested in the reception of people listening to this. That's, uh, that's why I'm putting it out of I'm just, like, I'm what, casting the idea out there. Yeah. Like what it could be where it's not like where it's not the lottery, but you go predator hunt. Right. Cause that's, that's kind of what I don't like about it where it's like, Oh, I'm going to go to the law. I'm going to, I'm going to go buy my lottery ticket. And if I don't, you know, if it's looking, I'm going to not win. I'm not even going to show up to the way in. Right. Because there's no point. Yeah. Well, it's because the reason why people, I feel like people have stopped going to weigh-ins, even when they, they don't have qualifying animals. It's because they, I mean, just to be completely honest, most of them suck. Like it used to, it seemed like used to, there was a lot more door prizes and stuff like that. Cause yeah. door prizes are awesome. 
Like your winners get the money and the buckles typically. Yeah, there's a and lot of people would show up just to just see, if the they, door just see if they get their name drawn for I mean, a door prize. There used to be lots of good shit, and like I said, it was pathetic how how little shit was at the last. It's the West Texas Big Bobcat. Yeah, but the and biggest, again, this the is the biggest predator contest in the nation. This this is the question to you guys is if you start dipping into that big like, are you going to just drive everybody away because they? I don't think so at all. You know, because I would because I'm, I'm with you. I'd rather. Because of the randomness of it all from the beginning is, you know, like you, you were sent, mentioned some jokes or you were talking about your other thing that you're going to be on the, the one this weekend and like best rack and like throw them like, you know, thousand dollars, you know, like just for showing up. Yes. Because it's, I've never even been to a way and I've hunted a bunch of contests with you. Like, it's, that's just something I'm really, again, this is like, I have a lot of plans. We're spitballing. Yes. But there are things I'm fist to start doing, and that is, that is, I'm going to start showing up to these weigh-ins to talk to people. I, w- I want to talk to face to face with uh, listeners and people on TPH and so on and so forth. And I want to start doing the, like these surprise drop-in little contests, like the the rack that makes us like little tingly. We're going to give you five hundred dollars cash. I think that's how it should be. These events, they're not, they're not what they should be. In, in in order to grow the situation into to where I think it should be, I'm not saying let's grow the contest to crazy numbers because they're doing that on their own pretty good. But I think we need to start pushing a certain direction to keep this in the correct light, you know, not letting it be secretive and all this other crap. Like, I just, you know, again, I'm holding a lot back, but I'm just kind of casting the idea out there. What about a series? Uh, de- I definitely, uh, think the series if you start out small and kind of test it and then you grow upon grow upon like i said five ten years from now who you know i'm i'm envisioning in my mind like these bass tournaments well and that's when you'll start seeing teams show up with logos on the side of the rack because they've picked up this sponsor yes and and we're not talking about you know joe's tire shop down the road i, th- I we're, think we're talking about you know fox pro you're talking yes. about you know Name the light company. I, I mean, think, I'm not going to sit here and list them off, but right. I mean, there's a Pulsar, you know, <laughs> you, you name it. I mean, you'll start seeing, I think, bigger name sponsors, but it's not going to happen with it being like it is right now. No, you no. know, you pull up to a bass tournament, there's, you know, them guys are jumping out wearing freaking Triton boats, you know, across there yep. in Berkeley, you know, and they everything to do with fishing. There's somebody, you know, they're sponsoring somebody in that tournament. I think it's time for contest hunting to evolve. Yeah. And it's never going to evolve if someone's not pushing it that direction. Now, do I really want to be the person pushing that direction? No, but I will because I, th- I think it's important. It's And that's you know, not, and that's also the only way that it's going to get a better name. Yes. Right now, that they refer to it as a killing contest. Yes. And I think a lot of these contests have done a great job at pushing away from just, you know, right. a, a, the, mur- the murder fest. And you know, with a okay, let's let's just take Rough Country, the big gray fox contest, for instance, because it's a it's a great example. Yeah, you don't have to kill seven hundred and fifty gray foxes to go enter. You got to have five. <laughs> yeah, you got five gray foxes to enter just to, for the big just gray. to have a chance for the big gray. Now your side or, pots, or you could roll in there with just one bobcat or one coyote and qualify the same one gray. You could re- literally roll in there with two animals and win. The big gray fox contest. Yeah. And, what's, and so, I mean, this is a, a subject of a lot of debate. It seems like some of the older, more older gentlemen or the, you know, super killers and everything else like that love the numbers game. And that's fine. There are contests for that. Yeah. But it's also like you got to look at not just what y'all want and everything else like that. You got to look at the whole. Like, I think it's important to have the different contest platforms to, you know, some people. Some people like to hunt a stringer hunt. Yes. Some people need to be able to do the high numbers because the property they're hunting is way overwhelmed with predators. Yeah. And they're not going to get the bigger animals. You know, exactly. Because there's so many, because of them. there's so many of them. It's just like deer that you're not going to have when you've got an overpopulation of, it, you're not going to have the biggest ones. You know, you get into certain areas where there's a fairly decent population of you name the animal, but they're not Overall, running over, not running yeah. over. You know, you may go, two three stands in a row and not see one and then you call it one or two and then you may go two or three stands and not see one and you call it one or two that's where you're going to find a lot of your bigger yeah, animals. overall i mean it's pretty general knowledge 
I feel like anyways, that the lower the population, the bigger they can possibly get. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's pretty simple, but I mean, that's another thing that I think by, uh, promoting this is, you know, you start out with just a single contest that does three contest, start the series there, start small, but just that one contest. And but then you eventually roll into, and then you can get into the whole, like, uh, there could definitely be a separate, uh, series for like the guys who like to hunt the most up, but there also could be a de- separate series for cords type hunts, which I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of all of it. I, I think the guys who have the numbers to kill a bunch, they should definitely have contests that pay top dollar for those, but there should also be the contest like cords because it invites more people to enjoy like it invites more people to enjoy it when they don't have a ton of land and everything else like that. Yeah. I, th- I feel like, and it, you know, yeah, I don't, I don't like, like, oh, we need to cater to everyone. But what's wrong with having different types of contests? There's nothing wrong with it. But I also think you should have the different types of contests because, again, those guys that put up big numbers, they have the country for it, and it's way overrun with the big numbers. Yeah, that should definitely, and there's definitely be a contest always, for there, them. But there's usually just going to be a handful of those guys show up, right? Right. The rest of them are showing up with the usually the qualifiers and right you know, whatever their big animal. And is. you know, that's I, would, another I, thing. I would venture to say that at least half of your teams that show up just have the qualifiers. Yeah, yeah, and probably more and, than and, half, and, and that's it. I'm going to say seventy five percent. Yeah, because I mean, and I'm one of them. I mean, one, there's a lot of times <laughs> if if I mean if I'm out hunting and I got a gray fox that I'm ninety nine percent sure is going to get the money. And I got my qualifiers. I'm gonna go home and go to bed. Yeah, there's uh, nothing wrong with that. Because so, I mean, it takes. Okay, now that we're on this part of the subject, it takes people. People have not done a, a good job again explaining why there is sometimes massive piles of animals. Mm-hmm. And they also the the contest promoters should go more on the offensive. I think as to why it is that way okay okay, listen uh, you know i hope more people listen to this podcast because i keep preaching this but it needs to be told again and again let's just say let's take uh rough country big gray contest for example well it's not really a good one because they don't do do they do a most of side body anymore i don't think so okay well it's all uh, it's all heavy animal size so let's go west texas big bobcat i think they changed the bobcat deal this year to to draw weight but Let's go to West Texas Big Bobcat side pots. They're typically a most of fox, most of cows, most of bobcats. There may be four, five, six hundred, seven hundred teams enter this contest. Okay, and you might think like you see this one picture, say Casey and Nate and them killed sixty-seven cows that one year in twenty-four hours, and that's going to be the picture that circulates. That's, and and, and everyone they're gonna place these numbers. Yes, and everyone that has no idea what's going on there think that everyone shows up with 50, 60 cows. Yes, and it's just a massive murdering spree in Texas on that night. No, no, no. What you're seeing when these photos get pushed around, you're seeing, one, people are hunting awesome property, and it's also way overrun with predators. Like, you're not going to a property that's well-balanced predator prey population and killing a massive amount yeah, of yeah, predators. You're not covering 500 miles and killing that many. No, you're, you're going to a property that has a huge overpopulation of said predator, whether it be the cats, fox, whatever. They have a huge problem where the predator numbers are sighted the wrong direction. You're also looking at probably your upper tier of contest hunters as it pertains to the most of numbers game. These people are the people that are driving like 97 miles an hour between each stand, which is already pre-plotted. Sprinting. Uh, from, it, yes. you know, as soon as an animal hits, there's someone that breaks in a sprint to go grab it while the rest of them are still in the rack hunting. And, per- and they do it for 24 hours. Yes. And I'm not that dedicated to it. You're looking at your people who would probably 100% be good to go on a series. Yeah. Like you're looking at your, your super competitive people. They're very efficient at what they do. We're talking about maybe not even no misses per night. I mean, I'm sure they have at least one, but you're talking about your your ultra competitive people who have the right land and it's overrun with predators. We're talking about a very small percentage of the overall population of people who entered that contest. Most people are just going to kill, what, like you said. I'm going to say, this is how I'm going to break it down. Let's say four teams. I'm going to say, a very, very small percentage of those people 
they're going to come in with the high numbers. The I'm going to say the lowest percentage. There's and, by, plan, and by small percentage, I would say less than 10 teams. I would say that's factual. And I'm going to say on the bottom end of things, the bottom end of the spectrum, there are people that didn't even hunt. They might have entered, but didn't, something happened. You know, truck broke down, whatever. They just got tied up, couldn't hunt. Uh, you're going to have people that just didn't have any success. Because, I mean, every year it never fails. There's people that never been even predator hunting, jump into well, a and contest. There, and there's times that you, there's, I don't care how much experience you got in it. I've had nights, you've had yes. nights. That you go out and the conditions seem right. There's nothing. I mean, the wind's not blowing. The, the whatever the condition you don't like to hunt in, it, it's just right. But you just cannot get the freaking animals to move. Yep. It's gonna happen. Yep. So you have that small percentage, and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna call it 25 percent are very unsuccessful, for whatever reason or not. Didn't hunt, uh, shitty night, sh- whatever. 25 percent. Just completely unsuccessful. I would say it'd be higher than that. Probably, but I'm... I'm just saying the ones that show up. As right. far as yes. the, the ones that show up, I would say half of the ones that are actually at a weigh-in probably got the... Yeah. They've got their and qualifiers and they've got their... Animals. Yes. So of the, say, 400 teams that entered, you have your top percentage of uh, people who are laying them down. Because they got... Again, we already went through that. Your bottom 25% of people just didn't even do nothing and then everybody in the middle i feel like is majority overwhelming majority are just qualifying animals which is typically like five to six animals you're probably looking at five to ten animals and you're probably looking at the amount of property they covered to kill said five to ten animals is pretty pretty substantial so as a whole it's nowhere near what it appears what these people appear to make it look because no one is promoting this correctly Right, they let this shit run rapid because we got to keep all this a secret. It's in bad taste. Yeah, they're not else. seeing Team Joe Blow that came in with with five grays and because a cat. no one's telling everybody's story. Yeah, no one's championing for them. Uh, and you know, again, I think the best way to combat this is make it well known. Like cover that shit. Let's turn it into a vent. Let's get the vendors involved because I feel as if as a whole. Yes, the predator hunting community is much smaller. Let's, let's just, we're talking broad, like United States. The predator hunting community is much smaller than, uh, we're, the diehard predator hunters is much smaller than the diehard deer hunters. But as a whole, most of your predator hunters deer hunt. So, I mean, most of your hardcore deer hunters that don't predator hunt, they're buying one rifle based on a lifetime. They might buy one box of shells a year. Two if they got hogs. Yes. <laughs> And that's kind of it. But when you start looking into the predator hunters, and I'm rolling in hog hunters with predator hunters, because most of them do the yeah. same, do the both. I'm just saying your typical Deerleys guy that's that he's gonna that's gonna buy the one box. If they've got hogs coming in on their place, they're gonna buy two I boxes. I better skip and get they two. Better boxes. better get them two boxes in case I in case I get in a mess of them pigs one day at the deer stand. But if if you really start doing the research and the work, this is for the vendors now. Predator hunters. One, typically buy way more ammo. They typically buy new. As soon as there's some new, better cartridge, they got to buy a new rifle. Mm-hmm. They're definitely upgrading glass much more often nowadays because a lot of new stuff's coming out constantly. Like This is this is where I would guarantee if there's any way to find out who that's, among the and hunters. That, and that's what any contest winnings I had always went to. Yeah, more gear. Yeah. I used, I more used, and better gear. I used any contest winnings I had to be able to ride off my toys. Yeah. Because it became income. Yeah. So you win money. Now you've got income. You report it. I was reporting it long before they started, you know, doing the stuff right there at the contest. Yeah. Because I was able to write off, <laughs> right. you know, whatever toys I wanted to buy for the next contest. Yeah. So I would guarantee if there's any way to really track it is if you really took a, a, a really top down close-up look most of your predator hunters are probably spending the most money out of all the hunters oh, i i feel like that's probably factual and again i'm rolling hawk hunters in with that because yeah. they're you know they a predator. use a lot of a lot of ammo yeah. but again this is like to me the vendors have gotten super lazy and, and i get it as a as a whole when you start talking about predator hunting specific gear the sales really don't take off well until like December through March. Yeah. And it's pretty slow, but that's because we try to hide this shit. And, you know, it's it, if you if you turn this into a series, it'll change some things. Well, would 
If it wasn't for predator hunters and hog hunters, would there be a thermal scope sold in Texas? Exactly. 100%. How many thermals? Yes. How many thermal scopes and monoculars and just thermal optics, thermal optics, would have have been sold since they started allowing those in just say Big Cat, Big Gray? Oh, exactly. I'm talking thousands <laughs> yeah. of freaking thermal scopes. And it's they're not just going to buy one. They're going to buy one. And in the next contest, they're going to have three or four. And the next season, it's like, oh man, this new one came out. I went with a buddy, and he had this new one. Oh man, I gotta get, I gotta get that one because it's better than what I got. And I'll yeah. sell these other ones to yeah. somebody else, and I go buy me a new <laughs> one. You know, it's, and night vision the same way. Which I know night visions, not as many people. I don't think use night visions. They do thermal, but definitely not. But the people that are diehard night vision people, yeah, they're. I mean, they're buying the best of the best night vision equipment yeah. that they can get you know they're freaking slapping helmets on and they're they're yeah. not there's no scanning going on they're just sitting there looking around and also i mean while we're on the whole contest thing i also don't understand why there's not more hog hunting contests during the summer i know there's going to be uh, a few big ones but it sure seems like it would be a great great outlet for some of these contest promoters if they really wanted to get serious about shit we do our predator hunt contest in winter and we have our big ass payout hog hunting contest during the summer. Did I just say summer want to go? I mean, predator hunting contest during the winter. Big ass payout of hogs during the summer. I mean, that really starts. Uh, I know around here it's kind of iffy. Like some places have a lot, like we do. Some places don't have a bunch, but like certain parts of Texas, that would be a, a big game changer for a lot of people. But again, you could definitely roll that in with each other, like make it a part of the whole series, or you have two different series, the hog hunting series and the predator hunting series or whatever the case may be. But if we, if we want to just stop trying to hide behind shit and make it something, we really need to start leaning into the contest. That way we can really establish something good of it before people start like coming after it. And it's just in my opinion, I, I mean, I still don't like contests, but whatever. Well, I mean, I think I think we've uh, beat this dead horse enough. Yeah, we've kind of whooped it pretty good. But I mean, I I, I would uh, I figure this will make another surface. We're probably going to talk about this quite a bit. But that's a good place to end it. We've been going at it for a while. Yeah, kind of like Kyle. I mean, is, know, he's been he's been going at life for a while. You can he's getting old. Old. Is there one last jab you would like to take at Daniel before we? Because you know, if you recall. At the end of the podcast, he took another jab at you. Yeah, he took another jab at me about about shooting spikes and stuff, you know. And you know, I, I, I just yeah. You turn another cheek. I'm gonna turn. I'm gonna be the bigger man. <laughs> By bigger, do you mean taller? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, please let us know in the comments down below what you think about all this. Like, uh, drop us a comment if you think the series is stupid or you think it's a good idea or if you have ideas in general. Like, that's, that's why, why kinda... Daniel doesn't shoot spikes. He only buys one box of ammo a year. He's a deer hunter. Classic See, I, deer hunter. I buy several. I like to shoot them. Or if you think Kyle is a ruthless person for shooting all the spikes, the camera's not on, John. It, it's on. Oh, okay. We're in a wide, we're, we're in a wide shot. Oh. Anyways. Let us know in the comments down below what you think about the series and what you think about contest hunting. What would you, you think about anything? Would you like to see a Texas predator hunting fest? Yeah, I would. Something. But we appreciate y'all watching. Go check out allymunitions.com. That's what helps pay for all this stuff. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>